So I was reading a blog, an architecture blog the other day, and I came across this article called The Life of a Project. And what it is basically is from the minute the client gets the idea to build something to the minute they receive the keys and they start using the building. And some genius out there decided to put that into a diagram and call it the life of a project. And this is what the diagram looks like. It is like such a giant document, but it literally explains every step of the way. It, you know, it might sound like a simple process, but there is just so much coordination and work that goes into it that somebody put it into a graphical document so people can easily understand it. And I honestly, this is a golden document. Like the minute I printed it, like you can see that I've been like underlining things, I've been highlighting things because this is such a good document. If you understand it, you'll be able to manage, design and work on any project of any scale and any type here in the United States. It's really extensive. This is like the process that um, they will follow if they want to build like um, um, a big hotel or an airport or a hospital. But you will see this process in a simplified way um, in smaller projects as well. But, you know, I'm just going to try to kind of cover the basics, but I'm going to leave a link down below. And I think if you are studying architecture or if you're practicing architecture, you should definitely like give yourself an hour, go study the document, understand it. I swear it's really going to be worth your time. So if you want to learn about what the life of a project is all about, then please keep on watching. All right, so I just figured that it's um, such a long printout that I feel like I'm going to share my screen and kind of like zoom in to the certain parts that I want to cover. Um, I think that's uh, that'll be better than kind of like show you in the printout format. So I feel like the first thing that um, I should go over is the main um, role players, the main major role players. And of course, you have the owner, you have the architect and you have the contractor. So this is what um, you will see here. Owner, architect and then contractor. And then every single one of them, they will have their own duties, their own to-do list, their own deliverables that they have to um, deliver on time. So let's start with the owner because of course they are the first person that gets the idea. They are kind of like the first person that will join the team, right? So usually the owner is what will provide anything that has to do with the land. Of course, they will need to um, have a land. Um, and then they will have to provide surveys. So they are the ones that are going to hire um, surveyors. They're going to hire like sometimes civil engineers. They will hire uh, geotechnical. So they kind of like know what kind of soil they're working with. And then they will also have to provide like legal description. You know, what kind of land is that? You know, is that a commercial zoning? Is that a residential zoning? And then they have to come up with a program, you know, like, uh, do you want to build a hotel? Do you want to build a hospital? Um, and then they have to make sure that they have some financial evidence, you know, like are you capable of actually hiring an architect and a contractor? Do you have money in the bank? And that could be, you know, like a loan from the bank that could be just cash sitting in their account. Uh, but any type of financial evidence that will be required before you start the project. And then they will require them um, some type of insurance because, you know, what if um, there is a fire that happens in the building? What if there is a flood? What if there is an earthquake? And then, you know, you can see here, like all type of insurances, you know, they have property builder, they have work compensation, general liability, personal injury, property damage, automobile, you know, just like different type of um, insurances. And again, that will vary. It depends on the project. You know, if it's like a small project, then it's whatever. If it's a big project, then um, then you have to have all of those. So that's basically the owner at the beginning of the project. Usually, I would say like the owner is probably has the least amount of work to do, but it's a very important to-do list still, um, because without all of these things, you know, they cannot go and hire an architect. So they have to get all of this done then they go and contact an architect so now the architect is gonna be like okay um owner so you i heard you want to build a hotel i think yeah let's stick with a hotel example because um it's gonna kind of like be easier for you to um, visualize the project so now once the architect joins um they're gonna have to sit down with the owner and have a very very important discussion about something called delivery method so the delivery method is basically how is the project, how will the project be run? 
um, who is going to be part of the project, uh, what's the timeline of the project, because the delivery project is what will dictate the roles and, um, you know, who joins when, um, who does what, um, who is liable for what, who has a contract with what. The first project delivery method, and I feel like the, the ones that is most popular and uh, the most traditional one and the one that people are most familiar with is something called design bid build and this project delivery method is basically the owner hires an architect the architect designs the building um, through all the f design phases and then once they have a construction document set they will send it to multiple contractors the contractors will look at it they will price it they will send a bid like for example i'm gonna build you the hotel for like 100 million dollars um this contractor is gonna tell you i'm gonna build it for 200 million and the third one is gonna say i'm gonna build it for 90 million and then the architect and the owner they sit down and then they look at the bid and then they decide who they want to go with once they pick the contractor then they build it so that's why it's called design first bid then build so that's the first um, project um, delivery method. The second project delivery method would be um, design build where the owner only contracts with a construction company and usually the construction company will have its in-house architects. Um, and this is usually good for the client or for the owner because they have only one contract. They don't have to hire the, uh, the architect separately and hire the contractor separately. So kind of like an easier delivery method. This is the second one, design build. And then you get a construction manager as a delivery method. And I'm not gonna go into details in this one, but usually the owner hires an architect and hires a construction manager and hires a contractor because you know like the owner is too busy or like it's a big company they don't want to deal with like the day-to-day -day, so they hire someone to represent them so that's the construction manager and it's the construction manager that's, that will kind of like manage the project and there's um the last one would be a uh, fast track like let's say you have the hotel example but you have to open by the summer because it's a, a beach hotel um so what you will do as an owner you will tell the architect hey listen so as you start designing i'm not gonna wait for you until you finished all of the design like just give me bits and pieces so like you finish the foundation plan give me the foundation plan i'm gonna give it to the contractor they will start building the foundation and as they are building the foundation you are working on the interior layout you give me the interior layout we build the interior layout and then you you finish um you know like the finishing touches etc etc it is such a fast track hence the name and it is so expensive and stressful because you know like basically they are building something that they don't know what it's gonna look like at the end of the day so there's a lot of room for errors um and you know like if an owner does this they better know what they are doing because it's it's not for everyone um it's usually for like big companies so anyways, I think for like the, the sake of this video, let's stick with um, the design um, award build or the design bid build because it's the most traditional, the most popular, the one that people are more familiar with. So now we're going to build a hotel. The delivery method is going to be a design award build. Now the architect needs to get to work. So so if you are um, practicing architecture already, you probably know about the um, phases of design you know you get schematic design where you design like you know like the mass or you design like the big picture like how many floors uh, what kind of structure is it gonna be um, and then you move on to design development which is you know like you kind of like work out some details you work out some elevations some millwork stuff inside um, and then you get to construction document then um, I feel like by the time you get to construction document all the design is done no changes should be made because it's gonna cost a lot of money um, so construction document, you're just documenting all the, you know, wall details uh, and specifications and stuff like that. So it's a very technical phase. Um, and that's usually the last phase of design. After you're done with your construction document set, then you package it and you send it to the contractor. So now obviously the architects cannot do everything. And, um, the owner kind of assigns the architect to hire structural engineer, hire a mechanical engineer, electrical engineer um any type of like consultants that they will need for the project so for, so under the architect so if i were to draw um a diagram for the design uh, bid build so it would be you get the owner and then you get the architect and then you get the contractor this is like the contract structure basically and under the architect you get structural and then you get electrical and then you get mechanical so these people are basically working for the architect 
they are not working for the owner because they have a contract with the architect anyways i'm not gonna get into too many details but you get the point so now that um you get all of you know structural you get your mechanical you get your electrical you get your landscape um and you, as you're working on your design phases you're working on your schematic your design development your construction you're sharing drawings with them like hey structural engineer listen i want to have like this really big um auditorium and i don't want to have any columns in the middle so here's my plans you tell me how many columns i'm gonna need you tell me how, um, how deep the beam should be and then um you know there's like this coordination internal coordination between all the engineers and the architect so um like i said once this is done uh, then the um architect and the owner is gonna they're gonna sit down so they're gonna sit down they're gonna look at the design and um again let's say it's a hotel then the client is gonna be like okay i have like five contractors in mind send me these plans i'm gonna send them to the contractors and i'm gonna wait for a pricing or a bid so now what the architect and the engineers are basically done with their work so um and the owner is done with their work as well so they just kind of like sit back and wait um and then at this phase is called the bid phase the uh, contractors are like going crazy on the drawings they're like flipping pages and like they are reading so like I see you need all this marble lobby um, you need like this fancy wood for your fireplace you need this you need that so they're like just adding the numbers and you know sometimes what they will do um, you know the contract the architect needs to be still in the process because the contractor might call you or like send um, an RFI a request for information and they'll tell you hey listen it seems like you wanted to have like this many light fixtures in the lobby but the electrical engineer said this many um light fixtures who is who is right and then the architect and the engineer will kind of like sit together and then they're like oh you know actually i messed up i'm gonna correct my drawings and they send an updated drawing called an addenda so you know now the contractor can price it correctly like 10 light fixtures instead of 15 light fixtures. During the bid phase, besides the RFIs, the uh, request for information, you can send something called uh, substitution. And that could be like, um, you guys wanted to have like this marble sent all the way from Italy, and it's gonna cost you 100K. Um, but I think there is somebody who can provide it here in the US for like 50k. Do you guys want to do that? Do you want to change it? And then the architect and the owner, they're gonna sit down and they're gonna be like, mm, I think we're gonna stick with the Italian marble because the one that you suggested is like really cheap um, and it doesn't look good. Or they can say, oh, you know what? Actually, yeah, it's fine. Let's do the one from the US and it's gonna be cheaper. So now the contractor has to go back and change the numbers. Now, once they are done pricing everything, the big day comes and that is called the bid date. So everyone has to send the bid price on time to the architect. All the contractors need to finish, you know, pencils down, send your drawings and your pricing to the architect. Now the architect receives that with the owner and they open it and then they look at the prices. Um, one uh, contractor um, said they're going to do it for $200 million. The second one said 100 million. The third one said 90 million. The owner is gonna be like, you know what? I feel like the 90 million might be a little bit too cheap and the quality might not be good. The 200 might be too high and the price is not justified. So let's go with the 100 million dollar one. So now the owner gives the bid, they award the bid to a contractor. And the contractor is happy and everyone is happy because the construction is gonna start finally, but not so fast.